Hey roomies, it's Ryan. Uh, just wanted to record a little prologue to let you know that we actually recorded this episode a few months ago, so the references might be a little dated. Specifically some bits about Elon Musk buying Twitter. Remember when that happened? That said, we do also have some fun bits on movie studio openings, and we talk a lot about our favorite fonts. This is the episode with me and Seth have been talking about doing because we're kind of geeks when it comes to fonts and typefaces. But this one's really fun for the video version, if you want to check that out on our YouTube or at writersroomgame.show. All right, on to the show. Next next episode of the Writers Room Talk Show, talking the ghost in the darkness. <laughs> Talking Ghost uh, in the Darkness. Hi, uh, with this is a, a podcast. Every week we talk about the Ghost in the Darkness, <laughs> the classic 1996 Michael Douglas film. And we just talk about different aspects of the movie every week. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. I'm still Seth. He is still Seth. I'm Ryan. Welcome to the Writer's Room Talk Show. Um, of course, uh, we alternate game show and talk show episodes. We don't need to do an intro. We went over this last time. Oh, we're doing you a talk show know. this week? I'm so dumb. I didn't realize that's what we're doing. Yes, we're doing a talk show. Oh, yeah. well, screw prompts. I don't know why I asked you for a prompt this week. I thought you, I was like, you make up the prompt this week, but uh, it's a talk show. Oh, <laughs> good God. I'm relaxing. I was like sitting here like ready to write. I took my vitamins. I was like, Dude, look at you. You you did. Actually, okay. did, I actually didn't do my cocaine yeah we uh, we alternate now this is partly because we hear from people uh listeners like you that you enjoy these talk show episodes where we just kind of talk and ramble like regular podcasts but we still really love doing the game show so you know this season we're going to alternate seth we're coming off an episode last week that i think is one of me and you's favorite recording processes uh that we've had thus far recording this podcast yeah i was really happy with it i you know re-listening to it i'm like i don't know how much sense it's gonna make to the common the listener audio like listeners. Yeah, the audio listeners maybe it will who knows but it's the most fun i've had on uh, recording yes. one of these i think it was a revelation uh, us being able to just pull up Document island and actually and write write, the, write it, a scene it, along it, with <laughs> You and I, why don't we just do that more often and like write scripts? I don't know. We can, we talk you and it. I can take Matt Black and tell him to go f- himself <laughs> by, <laughs> by writing 17. I love that I'm just mythologizing. Matt is this like <laughs> a villain of the podcast. What's great. And I still won't, re- I still won't reveal what we've been working on because I feel like it's much more fun to keep it a secret until fingers crossed something happens. With okay, it, I will. I do want to tell the audience though about your deception and trickery. Yesterday I get a text from Ryan that said, well, I get a call from him that I'm not able to take it because I'm in the middle of a meeting. And then he texts me right after and says, call me ASAP, all lowercase, which means I should have seen that like the, I think that if the C in call was, it was lowercase. That's clearly you going out of your way to seem like you're in a hurry and it's very, you know, urgent. <laughs> For context, which I meant, Ryan is actively pitching major motion pictures at the moment to some <laughs> very, very high profile players in the game. And to get that text from Ryan in the middle of that, it, it invigorating, it's exhilarating is what it is. It's like, oh my God, every, too, everything is like... about to change. You don't, you're not going to call me when something's bad. Like, dude, call me. Our one, our <laughs> like one mutual friend is, is hurt. Like maybe you will, but I think there are other people you'll call in t- a state of emergency. The point is I call thinking Steven Spielberg just walked into a Zoom meeting or something. <laughs> And I like how that's the peak of excitement for me is Steven Spielberg didn't, didn't buy your project, but walked into your zoom meeting. Zoom meeting. Yeah. I mean, but for me and you, that's a life changing event. Uh, It is. I mean, I told, I've told, I think on this podcast this time I was at Amblin, I was at Amblin in the lobby waiting for a meeting and looking Mm. at my phone and I hear Steven's on his way up and I look up and the person at the front desk is hanging up the phone and I look over in the courtyard and I see these sneakers going up the steps in a, at a cadence at which someone of Spielberg's age would walk up some steps. And I thought, I just effing missed him. Like I could have, like he literally walked through and I was on my phone. The point is, wow, I stretched this story out. Oh, you made it all about yourself. Paulie was yeah. What, hello. Who am I? He, Polly was actually calling me today. I've got Renee here. We need a name for the episode for the podcast episode. And I was like, you son of a bitch knew how exciting this was going to be for me. And Here's he the thing. So I actually wasn't even evil. thinking about the, the, what I was going through at the time. I'm only thinking for about me, what you're it was going more, through at the time. I was being, I was thinking about how generous would this be if instead of naming the episode ourselves and, and, uh, you know, setting it in stone, we should call Seth because he usually has great ideas for uh, the titles of these I episodes. I love your painting and is generous when you were clearly choking and I showed up and saved all of you with one suggestion. And, and, 
Renee, unfortunately, you know, if you listen to this episode and it sounds, you know, uh, harshly edited or mixed it's because Renee was going on vacation the next day and he's not able to edit this episode that you're listening to now. So I was like, we need to, we need to title this episode before it exports this, this uh, episode trailer. So I'm sorry for, uh, you know, leading you on Seth, thinking that uh, mm. I might be a big Hollywood player now, but uh, fortunately it's still little old me. Uh, nothing has yet happened, but we are me and Matt Black and Seth's rival. <laughs> Everyone's uh, rival. That man is everyone's rival. If he writes scripts the, as fast as he does, and at the magnitude and, and amount that he does, and the quality that he does, he is a villain to us all. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're pitching a movie around. We'll we'll see if anything happens. Uh, Seth, you will be the first to know, besides my wife, if if something happens. Just say call me uh, ASAP, and I'm not going to yeah. answer anymore. ASAP. Crying wolf. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's funny though because Matt this past weekend did like a major rewrite of our of our script, and I was like, "Of course he did," <laughs> and it's always good. But uh, Seth, dude, this week, I, what, what were we talking? Yes, the the past mm-hmm. episode. It was such a blast writing that, and I think it's. Uh, I'm very excited for the upcoming episodes of us writing the scenes together, as opposed to just coming up with plot ideas. Me too, but not I this week. Us. Not this week. This week is a talk show. We got to bring instead of focus groups, since we said we we're cutting the focus groups, we should bring in like people to do the table read with us. Though. We should <laughs> because uh, it would be uh, uh you know listening to it back. I was like, man, we should have at least gotten like Renee to read the the, the description or something. You know, it's to, true. Uh, it's true. So uh, yeah, that'll be fun. We'll work on it. But uh yeah, since this is a talk show, we usually talk about random topics. Of course, we've got a, a Discord full of people that can uh, submit discussion uh topics for us to talk about. But then there's uh there's also Twitter. Seth. Um, well, for now there is. Not sure when this episode's released if if there will be, but there is right now. Yeah, it's as it November will, 15th. 5 it's uh, slowly going downhill it, it appears uh, under Elon Musk and I think we we both are are firm in our and our ability to talk about Twitter in a smart way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about it in a smart way, but we can uh, definitely talk about it in a smart ass way and how <laughs> see what exactly. I did there. Yeah, dude, it's it's weird. I I don't know if I can have, give any commentary on it that's any that is I uh, definitely can. And other than just I'm watching it, I'm watching it crash and burn, you know, and it's uh, fascinating it to watch somebody have to eat shit on such a public <laughs> <laughs> like it's a little more fun to watch than it was in 2016 through 2020. Yes, with, yes, definitely. In, in another notable event like this, where somebody somebody Uh-oh. thought they wanted something and then accidentally got it, uh, chased a car and accidentally caught it, and then had to uh, do the job. In this case, so, it's a little more fun to watch, but it is a bummer because Twitter was like, "Sorry, go ahead." Well, I was I agree with that. Twitter is it's still my favorite social media. I feel like it's such a great mix of interesting stuff. New news that you're actually learning about and then also like memes and then also just like a, a place that you can actually possibly communicate with the people you look up to and yeah. uh, like i know i feel like you more than anyone as i've seen uh actually been able to in- interact with some of the people that we sort of idolize within this business and Dude, uh, i mean like you and i i think wouldn't have been friends without twitter in fact probably, oh, yeah, probably definitely 100%. wouldn't have been friends without twitter i can tell you i none of the work that i do Right now, none none of the ways that I make money right now would I be making money those those ways without Twitter. Arn Rabinowitz found my work on Vimeo, but contacted me through Twitter back in 2011, 2010, 2011. And yeah. who knew a decade later, you and Hashi would become viral sensations with uh, Jurassic Velociraptor heads on Twitter as well. Oh, I mean, we knew that. I was told that at birth. I <laughs> I didn't understand it. None of us did, but we knew that the prophecy would eventually be fulfilled. Weirdly, it was by a man that looked a lot like you. So just be prepared for <laughs> delivering some, the prophecy. Yes. <laughs> yes. That would be delightful. Oh my God. If you delivered my prophecy, will you, will you deliver my prophecy? What if that was like a thing you had to propose to someone else? Like, wow. will you be the godfather of my child? Will you deliver my <laughs> will prophecy? You deliver my, pro- <laughs> my, ch- my child's <laughs> prophecy. Yeah. Like I said, it's like, it feels like everyone is on it. At least everyone. And that and matters. It, for sure. In like a professional sense, like it, and it seems like, uh, how, Seth, how do you feel of, as a person who is, uh, who was verified, had the blue check mark and now, uh, everybody can, can buy a blue check mark for eight dollars okay a couple multi-tiered thoughts here one it doesn't matter it's garbage it, it is meaningless I, 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 okay number yeah. two 
Number two, it was really nice to have it. And it was nice that I had it for a longer time. I had it for a decent amount of time. I think I got verified in 2016, which gave me a little bit of like walk around confidence, you you know, uh, that nobody cares about. But for, you know, kind of like kind of like winning a Dove Award, like no one knows what that is anywhere ever. But you still get to say you won one. I see the Dove Award right there. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's it's the least relatable brag, like boast brag. It's the most like niche thing. I think I've talked about this in the episode in the podcast. Anyway, this this, I've got my I'm a Vimeo challenge winner. I've got the trophy back there. That's killer. I don't have one of those Vimeo challenge winner. Sounds like something they give you out of like sympathy. Although the way they titled it, like what's funny is they used to do like the early Vimeo days. They had these Vimeo challenge. They'd put out a prompt and then you have like a week to make a video using the prompt. And I won one of those and they send you like this cool, like street fighter looking <laughs> trophy. And then the plaque, it just said Spielberg never won one of these, uh, but not your name. No, it doesn't have the name. They probably made like hundreds of those for all oh, the Vimeo screw that. I'm sorry. They could have put your name on it. <laughs> Good Lord. That's still but, funny uh, though. But yeah, that is my dev award. Uh, but what was like, Oh, verified. So those are my, my two. And then the third thought, and there's, there's four of these, right? The third one is it was nice to have it longer than I, than I had a uh, story links in Instagram where I remember how hard you worked for those story I links. Worked so like, hard to get to 10,000 10, followers, followers just so I could yeah, share links link to my products and my videos. That's all I wanted. It was a dumb little goal. I got it. And no joke. A week later, they democratized the links and gave them to every Everybody. Which made me happy. And I think I texted you about it. I'm like, hey, sweet dude, I can share links. You know what? It was totally fine. The point is, okay, but what was number four? Number four, it's really funny what ended up happening with these blue checks. Like, it's, really, really it, funny what ended up happening with them. It's a shame because, of course, the verified check, it used to mean, you know, if you're a news source, if you're a celebrity, if you're if you're a, a filmmaker with the following, like Seth Worley. Or Ryan Polly. It, it means that you are the <coughs> real account. <coughs> this is a, a trust source of news and things and they are not fake they are not parody you know but then they do this thing and immediately it's like there's a fake account for everyone and if your name like if your username is obviously not that person but if you change your like display name to that person it is display name blue check mark so it looks exactly the same you can make the icon the same oh and everybody was getting fooled by these everybody and, and everybody uh, went and did elon musk it's just so funny that that was yes. not thought through and nobody thought that that would happen like so I think they took it down already funny right? that it immediately happened i don't know all i know is i get on twitter and i'm a little bit excited every day like is it still here it's still here what's happening now because it feels and here's the thing i will say i was about to say it feels obviously way less destructive you know everybody would say to every comedian like when trump was elected like oh i bet this is like you know, pure gold for you. And Patton also has a great whole act that I won't even try to replicate, proceeds to try and replicate it. But he basically was like, well, it's kind of like if a train, this is paraphrasing, if a train full of monkeys and shit barreled into a sex toy shop and exploded, like <laughs> it'd be like, I don't think I could add anything to this. Like, I don't think, I don't think this needs my commentary. Trump is the worst thing for comedy right now because The longer he stays in office, the more tense and angry and on edge everyone is. So it's gonna, we're gonna hit a point, we haven't hit it yet, where even bringing him up, people are just gonna be like, I'm exhausted. If you're making jokes about the apocalypse, ultimately none of those jokes are worth it if the apocalypse happens. This is like if like the Trump, this is kind of like the Trump presidency, but like way less people are being hurt by it and way less people's lives are being ruined by it. And with the exception of the people who are being fired from Twitter, which, which sucks. It sucks to oh, it, that it's, that it's making, it's making a lot of people's jobs terrible and it's ruining a lot of people's uh, job situations. But that aside, it is very funny to watch. And it is sucks again to like see a platform that you really love get destroyed, but the platform had already kind of been totally corrupted. In yeah, it's, Trump times. it's that weird. It's that weird thing where it's like, it's, it's a source of good, but it's also like the joke of Twitter is like, isn't this awful? Like, this is awful. You guys, and then you just continue to use it mm-hmm. and continue to do things on mm-hmm. it. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how all that tapes up for sure. I'm trying to remember my favorite, like fake account from this past week. Oh man. It had to be, there's like a president Biden one where he's just saying the most ridiculous things. See yeah, if I can most find of them it. are completely yeah. inappropriate. I did love the one you tweeted and I retweeted it. You retweeted it and I retweeted it. Oh, this sentence is from the thing of the dog with the blue check mark. Yes. The, yes. The, the dog from the thing with the blue check mark on it. And it's just the, the rest of the guys looking at it like, yeah, that's real. Of course, OJ Simpson uh, saying, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I did that shit. Oh my gosh. 
That one was so good. Can I see my favorite somewhere? Is that a thing? Oh, God. I- yeah. I mean, most of them are like horribly offensive that I'm not going to share, but it's like I kind of feel bad for laughing at them. But uh, yeah, they already pulled the plug on Twitter Blue. So there you go. They're not uh, <laughs> so stupid. I can't believe <laughs> it. Oh, my it God. Lasted a, lasted a few days. But uh, Seth, while you're looking for that, I, I want to bring up this is a topic that I figured, you know, this could be our main topic. This could be one of the things we talked about this episode, but something we love. And we've talked about doing a talking type episode writer's room where we just talk about um, our favorite fonts and like the history of those fonts the fonts uses in film it's something that uh, me and you geek out about quite a bit yeah uh, but i feel it. like something you know that's eventually we're going to make it to that episode it's going to be really fun but something else we love and we've mentioned in the past is like a film production company logos like before films and their sort of custom usage i saw a tweet today and i don't know if you're uh, you'll 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 hear this i won't screen share it but the uh, Alien Three studio logo fanfare. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you? Uh, do you, do you? Uh, no. Uh, no, no check it's, it's the 20th Century Fox logo, the big gold, you know, 3D Wait, type. But you said you're not going to share it. I won't. I'm, I'll I'll play the audio for you. But how will the audio actually. do anything for me? We're going. We're talking about type, aren't we? No, but check this out. Check this out. I can't hear anything. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, then I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> Are you trying to why why didn't you want to show it to me? I guess I could share a screen. It's not that big a deal. Full full disclosure, I never seen Alien 3. I always heard it was not great. Yeah, it's rough. You should listen but, to the episode. I think there's an Alien 3 episode of what went wrong. I'm pretty sure there is. If not, there's a read up. I'll send you something. It's re- it's it's a fascinating behind the scenes story though. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I and I've heard that it's there's like whole documentaries about this and like the stuff go everything going wrong and everything. But I saw this and I'm like it makes me want to see this movie. But uh Oh yeah. That's right. I was like that rules uh, I so about hard. That. I forgot about that. That is very cool. <laughs> I'm like, that's right up there for me with like the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the mountains of Paramount becoming the mountains of, you know, the location that they're in, like that kind of stuff. Yes, Kauai. I shot at that mountain. Yes, because you, yes, you shot your adventure now there. You and your memories of my memories. Look at you. I'm training you I'm a fan set. I'm a fan first, you know. know, One of your your loyal verified Twitter followers. (laughs) Thank God. I want to ask Seth, and I don't know if you have something on the top of your mind. Ask Seth. What is your favorite like alternative or like variant version of like a studio logo, oh, studio fanfare? Great question. The Simpsons movie is the one that comes up immediately of Ralph Wiggum ba, 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 in the 20th Century Fox logo. Uh, that's not my answer, but that immediately thought of that. You have your answer because you probably thought this through. Well, I was just, I, I said the Raiders one because that's one of my favorites. And it's not really like a, a variant, yeah. a studio logo, but I just love the, and they do it in Temple of Doom, I'm pretty sure too, where it, it turns it to the gong, like the mounts turn to the it gong. Does, buddy, it does it in every Indiana Jones movie. You crazy? It does I it guess that's true. in the Mountain what's, what's and the Raiders, Mountain and Raiders, the gong in Temple of Doom. It's a mountain in uh, Last Crusade, but it's that's in Nevada. Right. It starts with a flashback Western. And then... Uh, and then it's uh, the the molehill in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's right. That's yeah. right. Which I actually like a lot. Yeah. So it's like those that always like. It's not uh, really an alt version of the logo, but it is. I I, I think it still counts as like. Yeah, a you're playing playful, with the iconography yes. of you know within within your movies. So I'm yes. like that's always the first thing I think of. But there's also like you know I feel like the Lego Movie does it great. So did the uh, Spider. Oh, yes. So did Scott Spider Pilgrim. Does it Scott great. Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim the, uh, does it really great too. The like eight bit Universal logo I love as well. Of course, you've got like Marvel Studios. They they love you know changing the. It's more changing the colors than anything. The color scheme and the and the sort of textures of the Marvel Studios logo, which I like that. I know my first feature. I'm going to be pushing hard to to change the uh, to do a variant logo just because it's like it's just such a fun way to start your movie. I'm, Especially I'm struggling like, right now with mine because I, well it, that's oh, dude. Well, go ahead, finish your thought, and then I'll tell you. Mine. No, I was Sorry. just going to say it's such a fun way to personalize, like take iconic branding of a studio and sort of personalize 
personalize it and making it a little bit more like, I don't know, just uh, more attention to detail where it's like, I want everything and this, the runtime of this movie to feel like the movie yeah. and not just everything after the studio logos, you know? It's also, I mean, it's like a, it's like an overture at a, at a, at a player musical. Like you, it sets the tone. It's just another way to set the tone for the movie. And to like, I remember going to a friend's house in my twenties and watching a movie and the guy fast started fast forwarding through the movie logos. It was the logo and the text that came like the, just, it was like, it wasn't an inventive like opening title sequence, but it was, it was just like, you know, so-and-so presents fade up, fade out, mm. but I was mortified. Like <laughs> that's where you get excited for the movie yeah. you're watching. Oh, that's yeah. why it's like, it's, it's part of the experience. It's setting the tone for the movie. It's like, you get to sit in anticipation and like take a deep breath and like, feel like I am at this movie. I'm in this movie now. And, and also this is just like, okay, what, what sound are they using under the titles? Is it, are, do they have a needle drop? Do they, is it, is it sound within the picture? What font choices are they using to like kind of set the mood for the movie? Like stuff like that. Even like, you know, it all, it, it all is a part of it, you know? Yeah. And I think me and you, that's something we think about. I think of that, like before I'm even shot listing the movie, I'm like, how do I want this, like the titles to come in and like uh, stuff like that. Have I know. You, yeah. With, with your movie, without, without spoiling it, you said you were, you were, well, you were I struggle struggling with my movie kind of, because we don't we're it's an independent, fi- independently financed movie right now. So yeah, yeah. until we're like acquired, um, mm-hmm. hopefully there isn't a studio logo on it. And yet I actually need, I need that screen time to be able to build because of the way that my movie is structured and the way that it moves toward but the way that it, yeah, because I'm assuming it, you're you're going to be using sound and sort of you know there's lots of build up in that beginning where your your visuals you need that. that well, the extra movie is it's a genre it's a genre film I would argue, but it doesn't get to those genre elements immediately. It kind of starts off from a more naturalistic place, and I I need as much time at the opening as I can to like get the audience in a mood and establish a tone and say like and just to say like this is where the movie's gonna going so like and get their expectations in a place. So then you feel like it's like you feel like oh I'm when you go to see Jurassic Park, you know you're going to see a movie with dinosaurs. But if you turn like, and so you can sit through you know, like an hour of no dinosaurs, knowing you're going to get to them because you saw the trailers, you're going to see it. But if you like turn on this movie on a streamer and you're like, I wonder how this is like, like you don't know that you may not know that there are going to be whatever at a certain point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. all that to say, I have, I've, I just have dropped a studio logo at the top of mine rather cheekily for now. I don't know what I'm going to do because it actually, it does a really good job of setting the tone for the movie and uh, I'm just not going to be there when we, you know, send it to the <laughs> festivals and stuff. Real quick on this subject, I just thought of this before I forget. Do you know the story about the Waterworld opening logo? No, I'm trying to remember it. Uh, okay, I it's, 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 it's essentially, it's the, childhood. it's the 95 era universal earth. So it's still the practical that's earth, yeah, right? Practical earth. film. And yeah. it just, at the end of the logo, it zooms in through the logo and into the earth and down into a and like oh and the earth yeah, gets yeah, covered I'm in water. That. Okay, yeah, yeah. have you heard the story about this earth, this globe? No. Okay, I, I may get some of this wrong, but like apparently the what do you call graphics house, whoever who were hired to do this opening logo to take the universal logo and re- and and modify it with this 3D animation. They asked uh, when they got permission, they asked Universal. They requested their assets, like the the assets, like the, any models used, like and they said sure, we'll send it to you. And then <laughs> within like a week, he gets a call at his like apartment or his office or something that in the lobby, he's got a huge package for him and he goes downstairs and it is a That's giant freight like crate with this giant globe in it that the universal thought, Oh, you need a model. We'll send you our model. He, th- and he, he was asking for a 3d model and got this giant universal globe. And he's like, I can't get this upstairs. Like this won't go in elevators. I don't know what the, st- what, where they ended up going with, with it, what they ended up doing with it. I think it's really funny that you ask for a 3d model and you get sent the entire earth. It's incredible. The entire earth. The entire earth. <laughs> earth i'm just imagining how that arrived too like in a big crate or something straight out of indiana yeah. jones it, it, it was apparently like a big old crate that you have to like crowbar open the sides of the box just yep dude i love that yeah it's stuff like that i'm like yeah, zooming into the the logo and it becomes the world of your movie i'm like that stuff just rules you know i'd love to at some point steal the joke from the tweet I, I, it's such a good joke that it's almost like i want i want to like pay the person who made this joke and steal it and put it in a movie the the tweet that was the the meme that was like on a clear day like this you can totally see the universal logo and they composited the universal logo like up in the sky like like mm-hmm. kind of faded up in the distance of the sky it'd be great to in a movie like open with the universal logo and then cut to down on like on earth looking up at the universal logo and like pan- tilting down to- <laughs> yes. it, it exists within the movie yeah. <laughs> it shows up regularly in the <laughs> like wide shots exactly. it just, it's, by and it's the never spoken logo. of no one talks about it but it shows up through 
throughout the movie. It is a, <laughs> it's constantly in there. I love it. Yeah, I don't know if I would have a favorite, but there's definitely a few that are up there for me in terms of those, the logos. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other. I also like, uh, there was a, uh, I want to say maybe it was an alien movie, but it's like, uh, I feel like a lot of horror movies too. It's just like you take, the, you, you, you take the logo and you just put it like dark and gloomy in its sort of atmosphere with muted colors. And you're like, okay, now we're in a Harry Potter movie, you know, whatever. The oh, Harry Potter did do it. They had the hair, the, the logo yeah. floating. You got mail, did it? I don't know how the two of us I didn't think of that. You, you got mail, the, di- the digital. Oh man, I freaking love that opening. Me too. It's so good. All the 3D model, early 3D models zooming through New York City. Disney, the Tron Legacy. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Disney does it a lot, actually. I feel like there's like a real obvious one I'm not thinking of. Lego Movie is one of my favorites, though. Yes. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Seth? I mean, that was the main thing I wanted to talk about. That's all we're going like, to talk great. about? It's the whole episode? <laughs> The <laughs> 30 minutes of us talk, uh, geeking out about studio logos. This is like what we would actually talk about in real life, though. If you guys want to insight about me and Seth, we would just geek out about, you know, movie. If you things could only or, work with one more font for the rest of your life, what would it be? One more font. It one changes more. like every week. It does change every week, but you, this is your font. You can only use this font. It's your, okay. it's your Ryan Polly font. Say you're going to be, say you're going to be like Wes Anderson for, and try for at least a decade to only use one font before you Futura. give up on that. Do you have this? Do you have a font do you have a seth worthy font i can come up with one oh, man it's so tough because i i feel like my moods change all the time yep mine too and i just i definitely have like some maybe it's because like since we started doing weekend video it's souvenirs sort of like yeah i've been using a lot a brand font so i use a lot on things but also it's just such a nice like soft friendly you know yeah, that's how i feel about recoletta which we use for vfx and chill yes, i thought same kind of same usage basically yeah. is like the, the uh, another soft. another one I really like in that category of like sans serif fonts that are like like soft friendly sans serif fonts that also have a, a, an obvious hint of, tinge of like do you mean do you mean serif of nostalgia oh did I say sans serif I'm sorry I meant serif yes thank you pro serif wow new spirit I like new, new spirit, spirit. I a lot of new spirit I was gonna say Cooper Black uh, new Cooper spirit. Black well, isn't that like a Batman font no I mean it's just like another Time to open certain... After Effects the only thing I open when messing with text uh, no I mean Cooper Black's just another it's sort of it's it's a little thicker and like you know vintage sort of friendly quirky font well it looks like it's time to share my screen with polly with that new I spirit wanna... no I, I i know what this this font this is oh we're sharing screens now baby i am baby yeah i mean this is this is recoletta to me this is like the same font new spirit i'm gonna type at least very similar seth and ryan hold that up and we're gonna real quick just hit Center anchor point and layer content, center and view with my two stream deck buttons. If and you're listening, the words Seth and Ryan are an After Effects window. This is yellow. a podcast conversation. <laughs> We've got. Uh, I don't know why New Spirit doesn't show up unless I search for it. But New Spirit Light Condensed is a is a nice font. And actually, it, that is very nice. It, what is what is some things you've used this for, Seth? Well, I've used it for a couple of things where some stuff I can't talk about. <laughs> but here, why, why don't I do this? Well, this is, kind of I'm talking this, about that stuff every week on the podcast. Now, here we go. Uh, let's say Seth and Ryan. Let's do this in a different. Let's one of my favorites I've used on VFX and Chill a lot because it's, it's a fun font. Is I'm now forgetting. Oh, Skull and Void. I've found that to oh, be yes. one of the Yes, fun. you used that for a uh, uh, Quasar title logo. I for, did. Uh, sorry, Qzar. Qzar, our uh, Q-zar. past episode. <laughs> which ah! I think you All right, so if I type, sorry, you have to say, you have to do that every time you do. You say, every time you do yeah. Qzar. But I think you, the Qzar logo, you you nicknamed it Qzar Love and Thunder because this was oh, yeah. like your, your attempt at a Love and Thunder style. Uh, so I found like it's real fun to pair New Spirit with like some of these old retro fonts because it feels like... Like yes. Seth and Ryan. Seth and Ryan pizza. Eat pizza <laughs> together. Or like I know, I know where you use this. You these, do know where I use this. Yes. I've I've seen it on a on a Seth, logo. Seth and Ryan Pizza Bros. <laughs> I like New Spirit. I obviously always love Apple. Apple Garamond. Apple Garamond. Yes, that's a classic. Yeah, I don't know what would be the Ryan. Like you still haven't told me the Seth font. Oh, you the, know, I don't know if this font. would be a Seth font, but I do think Albertus is one of my absolute favorite. Oh, um, yeah, that's it's God tier. Which it's actually had a comeback in like modern. Of course like, it has. I think Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings was the f- sort of the first like huge movie yeah. that I saw better outside of like you know John Carpenter classics. Yeah. And now it's like every other trailer. I feel like if they want to have this like in between serif, sans serif 
font and if it's like slightly fantasy or something like that it's like albertus is all over the place yeah avant-garde uh, itc avant-garde is just nice for the back to the future vibes yes classic uh, you gotta have the light though like the very like thin light uh versions that's true i don't know if do i not have it i mean book is light enough book is light like. enough yeah uh let's we're going this is so fun for listeners i <laughs> so fun for us to oh, just talk about i am a fun. big fan of uh is it s- circular we use it on plot devices a lot circular is a yeah, nice it's like a spotify font yeah so it's, it's a bit dated now too because it's like it was used everywhere online for a while but i still like it a lot yeah, the I trick is know, just right, picking something that's classic the right, i like the itc fonts because they've been around since like the 60s and it's like tried and true vintage fonts that are sort of timeless but st- yeah stuff it's like sad albertus to think about committing to a font though because can you imagine using gotham on everything right now like we that's were doing so, 10 years ago so early 2000s i know I know. So it's like, it's got to be something that's been around for a long time that it's just like, it's always going to be cool. Not just like, you know, trendy. I, I would say Helvetica, but Helvetica tends to make me feel sad sometimes. <laughs> Interesting. It like does, it's a little too, little too clinical. A little too cold. Yeah. It's like, I love it in, in lots of places, but, but like, I mean, right now, Pizza Bros and Helvetica looks nice, but you gotta, you gotta squeeze that kerning a little bit, uh, even more. Like, uh, All right, I'm gonna do it even more. Oh no, no, that's what I mean. It, oh yeah, you, yeah. When you had it, like, uh, it was uh, it was nice. Do you also have just hundreds of like very specific fonts that you use for one thing that you'll never use again? Uh, uh, yeah, or that I got because I wanted to try for one thing and didn't like them, and they're on my computer taking up space. Um, as if I don't. How, how often really have you spent money on fonts? Seth? More often than me ten years ago would think. Yes, I mean I'm the same way, and I feel like I'll buy a font and i'm like you know what i want to support this is i really like this font i'm going to use it all the time remember and one then- time you did that and then they still try to sue you <laughs> Okay, well, that was a very specific situation where I was supposed to use the Adobe Type Kit. This is so boring to listeners. I was supposed to be yeah, using the Adobe real Type podcast Kit now. Uh, code on our website, but instead I uploaded the font, and apparently it's a copyright. It wasn't oh. legal to do that, and I had to pay them all this money to license the font. It's very dumb, but I have bought a few fonts where I'm like, I'm going to use this on everything, and I don't even use it on the one thing I was going to use it on. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's a, that's how it goes, and we get to support the type designers. I do love me some uh, some serif serif gothic honestly could like serif gothic extra bold that might be up there for me Me too but I, I feel like it's something that it's on its way out like i might get sick of it again for a while soon for a long time i would have told you house brush or how that slant. is that to me is a very early Seth Worley red giant font because uh, it was very JJ Abrams in, uh, wired magazine from 2009. It's so specific. It was because he talked about in the, the wired art, the wired magazine that JJ edited around the release of 2009 star Trek mm-hmm. was a, just a, I don't know how best to describe it. It was just like this bomb that just dropped into my life and like changed everything. Like I learned yeah. that's where I found out who Andrew Kramer was. Like he mentions Andrew Kramer in it. I found out about like Theory 11 who makes uh, magic stuff. I found out about like so much stuff. House Industries is I found out about them through this Wired uh, article issue. It's a whole issue that he edited that I, I don't know if you can still get it somewhere but it's amazing and there Dude, hasn't I been I gotta any, see if that's online somewhere that I can. There hasn't been anything uh, like it since for me that has like influenced me in such a significant and sudden way like that magazine did Mm. and so i used house fonts on everything for like the next uh, six seven years yeah that's uh yeah. That's me. I, I'm kind of love it. Look at the new spirit. Look how that. Look how pizza bros looks very in nice. new spirit. That's I feel nice like fun. that, uh, especially you know, slap that on a, a beer label. That's a classy looking. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's or very nice. Talk and type. Talk and type. <laughs> this episode has become talk and type. It has become uh, talk and type. Finally. Welcome everyone. I'm Ryan. This is Seth. Welcome to talk and type. I still don't know my font, man. I, it, there's just I so many that I love that it's hard to. I haven't really committed to one either. We're just walking through them. And Wes Anderson. It's like yeah, future. I remember That's we all. I'll go Futura through goes on Futura everything. phases, I feel like. And then we come back around because it ends up working really well on stuff. Just, uh, all caps, you know, just uh, VCR OSD mono is another uh, good one for me from uh, which was the one used on a uh, better call Saul. Let's I haven't see. seen the, the version that you can also do or lowercase a VCR uh, OSD mono. Yeah. The version I have only does uh, all caps. Are you sure you have VR VS VCR OSD mono? Mm-hmm. That's what it's called. I've said it multiple times now. Right. Different version. I have so many fonts in here too that I don't downloaded just to recreate a, like a logo or something for either this show or for absolutely yeah give me you don't know your font do Dude, you it's it's so hard i'm still looking through and they're just like so many that i love that i don't it's hard to pick a favorite let's see and i'm trying to think of one that you might have too so you can pull it up on your uh on your screen share <laughs> 
type gun. <laughs> Seth just typed out the words type gun and the top gun font. <laughs> It's a very specific joke that only works if you're watching the video. <laughs> only works if you're watching Top Gun. Can we talk about Gil Sands, which I feel like doesn't get enough love? I don't know if you have Gil Sands I Nova. I do have it. Let me grab it. Gil Sands uh, Nova. Nova. It's like the modern version of Gil Sands. I don't Again, have it. This is like, it works really well. I will tell me. you, I haven't gone toward Gil Sands ever, but the second I put... Oh. Type gun so, and Gil Sands. It looks like straight out of the eighties. Like this is an eighties movie yes, title. It is. So go type in Ferris Bueller's day off in all caps. Oh, of course. And you will, uh, and then maybe go to see if you have, uh, do you, the, is uh, there a line break in that or is it all the way? Yeah. Yeah. You can do a line break and, uh, and, uh, you know, space it out. See if there's, you have the black version. It might, the black might just be on uh ultra bold, ultra bold. That's it. Like, yeah. That's, that's the, that's, logo the, right that's the poly font. I'm sorry. You got to take this one as yours, <laughs> but it also Gil Sands and, and like a, uh, back to the future kind of way if you use like the light version or the book version you can ha- kind of have it small and have nice little vintage uh the kerning uh, on this is uh, weird between the a and I'm, the y it is it is a, you'll you gotta kind of go a little custom with it but i hate going custom gil sands is up there for me especially like i said if you do the lighter versions it does kind of give that uh same sort of you know avant-garde kind of feel isn't it blue or it's not blue in the movie is it? yeah no it is the okay. the main titles opening titles are that nice blue fade on and off but yeah, that's, I mean, it's up there for me. It's the quintessential Ferris Bueller font. And it's like, I think that font was made in the eighties as well, like uh, created in the eighties. So it just has that sort of uh, wonky, quirky eighties feel. Uh, <laughs> Seth has typed out Ryan Polly's life font. This is the name of our next podcast. Okay. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll accept it. I'll accept Gil But Sands if you go life. light with this and go super big and space between layers you get you get like if you type one word like snare (laughs) and then go super big i'm sorry this looks like this is like the beginning of an 80s movie this is the opening titles of an 80s movie right here yeah totally yeah because it looks like it looks like a hair care product like an 80s hair product uh, font too and everything is everything seems a little stretched too like like why would you make the like certain letters so much larger than the others it could and Um, it, it could easily just say vidal sassoon instead of uh ghost and it would still be the same <laughs> Fidel Sassoon. Thing. Yeah, it is ghost. That's a hundred percent the ghost font too. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> also ghost in the darkness. What is ghost in the darkness? Oh, you don't know ghost in the darkness. Oh, what is ghost in the darkness? Michael Douglas, Val Kilmer and a bunch of lions. Dude, I've, I've or maybe one lion, just it. one lion. It's a good movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. Ghost in the darkness. We'll so check it, it out. may not be a good movie because I haven't seen it in a long time. Next, next episode of the writer's room talk show. Talking the ghost in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> talking uh, ghost in the darkness i was this is a, a podcast every week we talk about the ghost in the darkness <laughs> the classic 1996 michael douglas film and we just talk about different aspects of the movie every week uh okay you're joking but that's basically what podcasts have become right <laughs> it's usually with like tv shows but i have heard of uh like, i know like the was- fuse though like drew and and uh, uh and charles have made like have stretched that podcast out longer than i think any of us thought they could have you have you heard of Including one them. hot minute have you heard of one hot minute no or maybe it's one heat minute it's a podcast where they they already went through it but basically heat they took um one minute of heat and they did a week on or like an episode on on one minute of heat and then the next week they would do the next minute of heat mm. talk about that what about the week of, after that and then the third minute well, hang on hang on hang on okay what about the week after that fourth minute of heat okay i buy that but what about what <laughs> the about week after that? the fifth week <laughs> fifth minute but they did that every week and then they like once they got done with heat they started going through other michael mann movies and they just one minute at a time that's crazy so after the first five minutes of heat they moved on to another another other michael mann movies and did five more minutes of those <laughs> no they did every minute of the entire movie okay seth they did the sixth enough. minute after that <laughs> but podcasts it's like this is like a like hit podcast so it's like you never know what's gonna work is that a hit podcast? podcast we write a movie every week we write a movie every week <laughs> except this week and yet the podcast that talks about one movie one minute of a movie it talks about one for six straight weeks and only that and not any further than that yes. it still is a hit podcast yeah so they did uh 
And it's a, it's a, it's an entire series, uh, like podcast network. They have Miami nice, which is, uh, That's excellent. Uh, breaking down the, uh, who are, who are these folks? Do I know who these are? People are, I mean, it's, I don't know. You, you can look up a one heat minute. I'm going to real uh, quick. Just put, uh, uh, make sure I save talking ghost in the darkness. They have a, a, a mini series called the last 12 minutes of the Mohicans. And they talk about the last 12 minutes of the last of the Mohicans. <laughs> just the last 12 minutes. <laughs> I guess excellent. so. Maybe it's a mini series. One thief minute. Another Michael. Man, uh, yeah, thief. You know. But anyways, is thief uh, the so. one that there's like a a friend of mine is what they made with. I think that's the one that my buddy has a shirt. That Darren has a shirt that says uh, thief. It's- soundtrack it's a shirt for the soundtrack to thief yes yeah, yeah yeah it's a it's like you know quintessential like synth wave sort yeah. of like early 80s it's what drive was basically modeled after even yeah. the uh the thief logo seth i don't know if you've seen the thief poster I, or oh logo, yeah oh yeah it's it's awesome it's yes that should I, be my font you know uh, that i still have not seen the final version of drive i only saw this one dvd i told you about this no so in 2011 ish or whenever like whenever plot device came out and i started making all these hollywood friends and being a big hot stuff verified verified that was the real verification accepting lord and savior jesus christ into my heart was the only verification i ever needed and that devil word and my devil word when i uh what out uh, so the there was a but yeah i think it was 2011 it had to it wasn't any before that a friend was like hey i have a copy of drive on a dvd that this it's this dvd is getting duplicated and shared all over town it's like a cut that was submitted to the festival maybe even screen but it was pre-score so it had temp score in it from this is the isn't this is the only thing you've seen of drive yes and it was amazing but it's the only version i saw had social network music in it and it was like this i'm, I'm telling you other people who live in la or work in la during that time can attest to this that like so many people only saw that movie on this bootleg dvd that was handed around that was like a screener that wasn't watermarked wow that's amazing yeah. i want to see that cut i got I mean, it the somewhere music, the, mu- the music in drive is awesome that's a uh, cliff martinez like the original I hear it score. is i've never actually heard it wait like you're playing it right now no i said i i'm sure it is oh. i've never even heard, i've never heard it <laughs> i thought you said here it is i've never actually <laughs> listened. Like, are, you, are you like playing please it welcome for me right ryan gosling <laughs> to play uh, the score no. for drive he's like that's not it's not what i actually contributed to the film like play it play it ryan play it goss i don't go by goss he just walks into your house and like holy shit you've been holding this the entire episode just on the odd chance that we would come around to drive at the end yeah i told oh. him to wait outside until we he came up and I didn't guarantee that he would come up, but I did force him to bring a synth with him, even though he doesn't play and has no reason to bring a synth to my house and play the soundtrack <laughs> to the film that he starred in and did not score. Oh man, what a shame. So after the sixth minute of heat, <laughs> what, what did they talk about? You're not going to believe this up. They Try talked me. about the seventh minute. Are you f-ing kidding me? <laughs> oh man. Seth, I started censoring trouble. myself by the way, because I've noticed that Renee has accidentally not us at times and so, so you just you just imply the cuss word without saying it. yeah but uh, it's, I, I used to do that very wrong in high school i would silence the wrong word and be like oh my god he kicked ass it was <laughs> crazy maybe like seth you did not do that right <laughs> you're one of those kids i love that my screen still has like, talk and ghost in the darkness, <laughs> talk and ghost in the darkness. <laughs> full screen <laughs> <laughs> this episode is gonna be a total dumpster fire for audio listeners but uh as maybe that's what season four of our podcast is all about <laughs> perfect audio podcast the writer's room game show with me ryan paul and seth work executive produced by grant wakefield at weekend video and ann fogarty at plot devices edited to perfection by renee gomez our art is by your buddy meg lewis and our face melting music is by ben work the Writer's Room Game Show is a weekend video production in association with Plot Devices. Learn more about weekend video at weekend.video and check out writersroomgame.show to listen to all of our episodes and suggest your own prompts for future shows. And don't forget to rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. It really helps our show out a lot. See you in the next one.